Actually, I don't need to sit on a pillow with you. You're shorter than I remembered. Everyone yeah. who's taller than me is just taller, so I like That's an forget. I'm the transgender man. <laughs> <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm Jackson Bird, and welcome to another episode of my Queer Story series. Today, I am joined by one of my personal role models, Cecilia Dintilly. Thank you so much for being here today, Cecilia. Thank you so much for having me. I'm just so proud of you. Oh. Fun fact for people watching, Cecilia is actually the one who got me started on testosterone and helped me out with all of the health-related things of my transition. You were actually there for my first tea shot. Yeah, I learned a lot from you. I used to have like a tendency to want to design people's transitions. Oh, yeah. So somebody would come and I say, okay, we're gonna do this, 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 you're gonna start, you're gonna do this, then this surgery, and then your hair. And <laughs> I think you were one of the first people that I said, I'm gonna let him do everything at his time and not be pushy. So you helped me put you know, my expectations on the side and respect other people's expectations. Oh, wow. You don't know that, but yeah. now you do. Now I do. Well, <laughs> I, what I do remember is that when I started, I just needed a, a primary care physician yeah. that I felt comfortable around yeah. as like someone who wasn't out really, but like I, I, you know, binded my chest and different things that like, how do you explain to a normal doctor? You know, I went and everyone was like, so you're gonna start hormones? You're gonna yeah. start hormones? And I was like, no, 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 not yet. I mean like, yeah, I, I want to, I think, but no, not yet. It was really nice though that you were all very patient. Like you made it very clear that anytime I wanted to, it would be easy and here's all the information, yeah. but like I wasn't pressured and that was so nice. Thank you, thank you. I will always remember you as somebody very important in my process of like respecting other people's transition. Oh, well I'm glad because I mean you're hu hugely important to my ah. process. Okay, well first question is yes. just how do you identify? Many things. I identify as a transgender person. I identify as a woman which doesn't mean that this is the end of my process mm -hmm. in transition. I believe that my process in transition will be evolving in the future to other places uh, out of nowhere but uh, at this point I do identify as a woman as a transgender woman I identify as a Latina a person in recovery I've been in recovery for six years the survivor of rape and sexual abuse and physical violence and a um, very open-minded person when it comes to sex <laughs> happens to be, I don't know, we can call it pansexual. Sometimes I just say my sexuality is yeah. unconcerned. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I identify, I guess, as a fighter. And it's a good thing. Though. Yeah, I like that. Identify yeah. as a fighter. You grew up in Argentina. Mm -hmm. From your experience, how is life different for transgender people in Argentina versus in the United States? In my case, I like to use the intersectionality of like, you know, geography of, you know, United States and Argentina but also time, yeah. you know, because I lived there in the 80s and 90s. I can tell you that nowadays, Argentina is a very open-minded place. I just went and I changed my name and my gender legally, and it didn't take a doctor's note, it didn't take a judge, it didn't take nothing. What, it, not even a judge? No, it took me go into uh, an office and say, hey, I want a new birth certificate that says Cecilia Gentile female. Oh my gosh. And they say, okay. That's like way better than in the US. Yeah, pa, 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 wow. 70 pesos. That's amazing. Yeah, if we look at that, they're even far more advanced than what we are, yeah. right? But I don't live there anymore. Right. If you ask me, you know, I still have the memories of an Argentina of the 80s and 90s just coming out of a dictatorship government. Mm -hmm. It's not only what they do, but it's also the kind of mentality that creates in people, which is like mm -hmm. a repressive mentality. Mm -hmm. So for a transgender person in the 80s and 90s, it was hard. It was it was very, very hard. They came a long way and they are in, in, in a much better situation now. Does that change the fact that transgender people and mostly transgender women are murdered like in the weekly or in daily basis sometimes? No. Mm -hmm. It still happened. It's the same thing that happened here. Throughout your lifetime, you've worked extensively with public health related organizations. You have a lot of personal experience there as well. So what are some of the biggest challenges facing transgender people when it comes to healthcare today? It's not only trans 
people it's like people in general the healthcare system in 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 the country is very difficult to navigate yeah it's not like you have to be trans to be totally lost mm -hmm. you know i think like everybody gets lost in the healthcare system yeah. in the, our <laughs> country i like i mean yeah the trans stuff very <clears throat> difficult but even like figuring out how to get dental care i am lost yeah <laughs> for trans people like we do live in some kind of paradise that is new york City. yes like, absolutely no. but think about this trans person in arkansas yeah you know and i, I don't know why I, I always go for arkansas <laughs> sorry arkansas. i love you all <laughs> your <laughs> lives are very difficult yeah, yeah you know it's it's difficult to you know to have a, a, a trans uh, identity in a trans life in in places that are not like as comprehensive as New York City. Mm -hmm. My daughter is actually a, a trans person, so mm -hmm. how cool is that? Super you know? cool. And we can use the bathroom wherever we want. Yes. Oh, <laughs> thank you, New York. We even have <laughs> billboards protecting yeah. us and letting everyone know that yeah. we can do that. In the United States, is many, many states and in places that you know folks don't have that even in the paradise that I was paradise that I was talking about when I was talking about New York things are not perfect because like as I told you you know I have this amazing uh, healthcare provider that you know takes care of me and understand my body and this and that but I get sick on the weekend and I have to go to the pool to the hospital and it's still a nightmare yeah go through a nurse and then to another nurse and then you get to see the doctor and then you go to the pharmacy I make it very clear from the beginning that I'm trans and like the ones that try to do it it really didn't come out in a nice way mm, and, yeah and you know and I shouldn't go through that no nobody should and then I had a nice fat bill yep you know for a copy oh I'm just paying $250 to be humiliated. Great. Yeah, yeah right? That's how it feels. Well, and there's also, that is such a, a dysphoric experience to yeah. have to like go through that, that there's plenty of trans people who won't go and get the healthcare that they need. Not even trans related, just, you know, if they have the flu or something or whatever happens, because they know they're just gonna be misgendered at every yeah, step and yeah, it's gonna be yeah. so difficult. Next is a, a huge question that could be the whole topic of like a four hour long yeah. video. I, you know, wanted to hear from your perspective as a trans woman of color, what are some of the unique challenges that you and other trans women of color face? First of all, I have to own to, you know, the privilege of being a woman of color who happens to be light. Mm -hmm because let's be realistic the darker you are the harder you have it yeah living a life as a trans woman of color which is like if you put it in there it's like trans and then being a woman is another challenge mm -hmm. and being of color is another challenge like not even mention when i was undocumented yeah forget about it yeah when i you know i was doing sex work it's even worse it's like a ladder that goes down yeah and then you find yourself in a whole pile of crap. All these intersections that, you know, uh, put us at risk all the time of violence. And when I'm talking about violence, I'm not just talking about, you know, a punch in the face, which is a horrible thing. You know, sometimes like verbal violence, you know, sometimes like looks mm -hmm. are violent yeah. to me. It can escalate to a punch and can escalate to, as we see many times, people being killed, being murdered. It affects our lives every day. Taking the train every day, I don't know how, you know, this person in front of me is going to react to yeah. me. I don't know if, you know, I'm not going to get clogged and that person is not going to like it and it's going to say something to me or even do something to me, which happens. Our lives are not just a risk but I also put into so much pressure that our mental health are always, you know, challenged to a point of like, you know, some of us needs to, you know, use medication. It is a harsh reality. It, it really is. But at the same time, we are a beautiful community though. Mm -hmm. Like I never felt more cared for. You know, when I'm with trans women of color and like, you know, in the same room and like I feel so much love and like that I think is the reason because I find it the strength to keep going. Let's move on now to the lightning round. First question, what is hormone replacement therapy? Hormone replacement therapy is medication that aids your transition. Transition and 
hormone replacement therapy don't have to go together. Mm -hmm. You don't have to do hormones to be trans. What is your favorite LGBTQIA movie? I'm old. <laughs> but when I was little, I watched The Hunger with David Bowie, Susan oh, Sarandon, yeah. and they have a, a, a scene with Susan Sarandon and Catherine Deneuve, and you know, that was my first encounter with anything that wasn't heteronormative, mm -hmm. and uh, I love that movie. What is the Transgender Day of Remembrance? It's a day that we take to moon and honor the lives or of all those that we lost due to violence. If you were a plant, what plant would you be? I would be a tangerine. Oh. My grandmother, who was the most accepting person in the world, had this amazing tangerine tree and like uh, I remember just climbing to the tangerine tree and eat until I couldn't just breathe anymore. My mom would go with a stick and she would say, little boy, come down, little boy, come down. And I said, no. And she said, what, you're not coming down? And I would say, no, I'm not a boy five years old. I love it. Yeah. That's so, so good. I would be a tangerine. All right, final question is uh, just what's one thing that people watching today can do to take action? Don't ignore. Ignoring our realities and ignoring the fact of what a life of a transgender person is and with all the disadvantages that come with being trans is also a violent act recognize your privilege that's the first thing that we can check your privilege it's very important absolutely is thank you so much for joining me cecilia to everyone watching i want to know in the comments today what your favorite lgbtqa related movie is so we can get all kinds of awesome movie recommendations and also make sure you subscribe to this channel so that you don't miss any future queer story videos thank you again cecilia thank so you. much for coming today oh thank you and thank you all for watching and i'll see you next time